going to be showing you how to add some movement to your basses and mid ranges using one of my favorite plugins, Isotope Trash 2. If you want to follow along, you can grab the demo at pluginboutique.com. And while you're there, feel free to check out the rest of the plugins they've got on offer. All right, so I've got a track running here, and it's got some drums and bass. Um, and you'll notice in a moment when I play it uh, that the bass has some really cool movement going on in the top end. Um, so let me just uh, play it for a few seconds so you can get an idea. All right, so let's dig into exactly how the sound is made and where Trash 2 fits into the picture. Uh, Baseline was created using an analog synth sample, and I've put the raw sample here on a, an audio track so you can hear what it sounds like without any processing at all. So let's listen to that. Okay, so pretty basic sound. It's a nice standard Reese, which has a lot of top-end harmonics. Um, and sounds like this are great to work with because they're easy to make yourself using any number of synth plugins, uh, or you can find them all over the place in sample packs. So the important thing here is that this is a full range sound. It's got a lot of uh, activity going on in the mid-range, but also up top. Um, the next step is to chuck it into a sampler, and we're going to modulate the cutoff on a low-pass filter using an LFO. So let's go back to the baseline here, and we'll take trash off of it for now so we can see what it sounds like raw. And I'll solo it. All right, so that's what the re sounds like played through the sampler. And as I mentioned before, uh, we've sent a synced LFO to the filter, which is providing the movement you're hearing on the top end. Um, and you might notice down here that I've also layered another sampler um, on top of it um, that's just got a sine wave. Um, and the reason for that is because there wasn't enough sub in the original Reese, so we're high-passing the entire mid-range signal and then putting a sign in uh, underneath it just to keep the weight consistent in the bottom end. So moving on, let's reactivate Trash and we'll dig into what's making it sound so cool. All right, so if this is your first time seeing this interface, I'll help you get your bearings. Um, Trash is a distortion plugin, but it really does a lot more than that. Uh, it's got filters and EQs. Uh, it's got a convolution unit uh, that gives you things like reverb and speaker simulation. It's got a full dynamic section um, that lets you do single or multi-band compression. Uh, it's got a great delay effect built in. Um, and it even has a configurable output limiter, which can be nice when the levels get a little bit too out of hand. So I don't have time to cover the plugin in too much depth today, but I do want to pinpoint a couple of things that make this sound special, uh, and hopefully you'll find them useful in your productions. So first stop is going to be the trash module. And as you can see here, you've got uh, two stages of distortion. Um, they're both identical, and they both feed into one another. So stage one goes into stage two. Um, and Trash also gives you quite a bit of control over the shape of the distortion. So there are plenty of presets, and we're using one here, but you can easily spend hours uh, editing the parameters in the distortion to get just the right level of fuzz. Um, and here is something I think a lot of people overlook, and it's tucked away in this filter tab. So the people at Isotope are pretty smart, and they realize that when you distort a sound, sometimes it's got way too much top end, and you know sometimes it doesn't have enough top end, uh, or maybe the sound's been thrashed so much by the distortion, the low end is way louder than you want it to be. Uh, so they decided to provide a pair of filters, one low shelf and one high shelf, low shelf and high shelf here, um, that let you shape the sound after it's been distorted, but before it goes into the next step of the signal path. So what's a little bit less apparent is that you can automate these filters just like any other parameter, and sometimes you end up with really cool effects. So you'll notice that the high shelf frequency and gain are being modulated here in Ableton Live um, right on the timeline, and I just did that basically by hitting record and then uh, grabbing the handle and moving them around. So let's listen to it again with the trash plugin playing. You can see what's happening here. All right, so that's only half of what makes this sound so cool. 
Next, let's move on to the Convolve module, which is the other piece of the puzzle. Um, I'll play the sound for a moment with Convolution turned off so you can see what it adds. So it's pretty crazy how much that's doing. Um, this is just being put through one of the convolution presets, and I think I messed with the separation and width just a little bit. Uh, but basically, all the action happening in the stereo field there is courtesy of this SWAT impulse response. And there are tons of these included with Trash 2. You can even import your own, so you basically you know, never run out of crazy textures uh, to put over your mid-ranges and other types of sounds. So moving on... I wanted to touch on a little bit about how you might use multiple instances of trash to keep things interesting as the tune progresses. So you see here I've got three extra instances of trash, um, and each one of them is doing something different to the sound. And if you look here, you can see that each instance of trash, too, also has a wet-dry mix control, which lets you mix as little or as much of the sound um, of the signal into the signal path as you want. So what I did was map some macro knobs in Ableton Live um, to the wet-dry on these three instances. Um, and basically, I'm just using out-of-the-box presets here so you can kind of get an idea of the quality of the built-in sounds. So... Let's close this, and I'm going to start from the beginning here and just bring these up kind of individually. And let's play it with the drums. And you'll notice in the case of this talk box one right here that it even ends up providing some new articulations that aren't in the original sound, so you can use it a little bit like a call and response. Alright, so that's all I have time for today. Uh, once again, the plugin is Trash 2 by Isotope. Go check it out at pluginboutique.com. I'm Quadrant. Thanks for watching. See you next time.